Well, for the life cycle of the census, you're looking at approximately 13 to 14 billion dollars to conduct a census. Now, go back to that number I mentioned before, though, and you're talking about in federal funds that gets allocated, according to the census count, 300 billion dollars annually. So, you know, you do spend money to conduct a census, but it is important because not only do you have the political representation, but then you have 300 billion dollars plus three tri trillion over the next decade that'll go out according to those census to those census figures. And now it's one of those things where this is where the people can help us curtail spending. Too often you you have people in the community saying, "Oh, the government's spending money, you know, what can we do about it?" Yeah, they can vote and they can elect officials who promise to keep the budget lower or to come in under budget, but really this is an opportunity to empower the community because that questionnaire is that important. If we get that response rate up, for instance, the national response rate last time was 67% for the nation. Every 1% we go above the planned response rate for the nation this time around can save 80 to $90 million. So you start going up a few percentage points, you're saving money. That's ultimately comes back to the taxpayer saving money for the government, for this economy, just by filling out a simple questionnaire and sending it back. The reason it saves money is because the non-response follow-up, or the people traditionally you think of, of the census, you think of people knocking on your door, that operation becomes smaller if we have the better response rate to the questionnaire at first. Okay, so 67% of the people that you mail the form to, they send it back to you. Well, that was a final response rate. Okay. So that takes into account the mail back response rate of the questionnaire, but that, that was also with subsequent follow-up, the census taker going to your door, knocking on your door. Uh, the response rate we're looking for this time, the planned response rate, I should say, we want higher, is 64% nationwide. But definitely, every 1% above that saves 80 to, 9, 80 to $90 million in non-response follow-up. And then how much time do you spend, once you have waited a certain time for the forms to come back in the mail, how much additional time do you put into trying to make sure everyone gets counted? Well, everybody, every, we are told that you get basically six attempts. So we'll make six attempts, and that can be a combination of a phone call. Uh, you also have reminder postcards that go out. And you also have, of course, the census taker coming and knocking on your door. A census taker will come knock on your door, probably right in the middle of a bite during dinner, <laughs> so that you can fill out that information, which is so essential to continued success and growth in your community. Uh, so if, if you just do that census questionnaire, you can avoid having to put your fork down, push away from the table, and go in to answer the door. Just do it the easy way. Jerson, if someone has some questions about the census or something we've talked about today, how can they get more information? Well, there's a the great website we have, www.census.gov. You can go there. You can click on Census 2010, get all sorts of information, all sorts of promotional information, and also know what it means. Go step by step as to why it's important, why it's so secure, the safeguards we take with your personal information, and also the fact that it's just going to be easier than ever. So they can definitely go to www.census.gov. And another thing, it's really fun and it's good for kids doing projects or just, you know, just to play with the numbers. It's as easy as typing in a zip code on the quick facts section and you can get some demographics on your local area. And inevitably, everybody who I send to the website goes in, punches in the zip code of their hometown, wherever they grew up, and is always fascinated by some of the numbers that come back. So it's, it's a good resource and it's open to the public so you can go there, play with the numbers, see what you can come up with and you know, know more about your community. Well certainly during this census too, everybody has a computer uh, pretty much so it really has, has changed since the last time you did this. Uh, was there any talk this time of actually being able to do the form or complete the form online? Census 2000 we actually did do that to a degree but through research analysis and because of mostly security concerns we're holding off on that for right now i don't think we're quite there we we take confidentiality to the utmost we we put an importance on it like nothing else because that's that trust we need in the community so anything that could undermine that including you know a not totally secure web approach to getting that census questionnaire back we don't want to rush it we want to do it right and make sure that people keep the trust in the census and that we get the right data. All right, well everyone can just go to the website for fun then. They can go for fun and they can take an a look. education. Yeah, definitely it's, it's an educational resource. Um, another thing that we'll be having its own dedicated website is Census in Schools, which will help 
especially K through six grades, where we will actually have materials, curriculum even, planned, pre-planned curriculum for teachers to use at the local level. And that's coming out any day now. And in that case, I'll get with the complete count committee of Hall County and approach all Hall County schools and other counties as well so that teachers can, you know, take a break from planning because we've already done it for them, get the census information out, whether it be geography or history or whatnot. We've had success with it in the past because a lot of times, especially in the hard to count communities, those kids go home, show their parents the census materials, all of a sudden they start gaining an understanding of why it's so important. Right. Well, certainly we want everyone in Gainesville Hall County to be counted. Definitely. And it's the best way to, to create an environment for successful growth because we're going to grow anyways. It's going to happen. It's happening already. 30% or so between 2000 and 2007. But to have successful growth is a big difference. To have the resources necessary is a big difference than to not have the resources. So that's why the accuracy of the count is so important. Because if we can get an accurate count of each and every resident in Hall County and beyond, we're going to better be able to serve the community. Well, certainly we thank you for joining us today on Eye on Gainesville. Thank you for having me. Once again, I'd like to thank all my guests for joining me here on Eye on Gainesville. If there's a particular issue you'd like to see us discuss, you can write to me at Post Office Box 2496, Gainesville, Georgia, 30503, or email pr at gainesville.org. For TV18, I'm Katil Phelps. You're watching TV 18, the government channel for Gainesville and Hall County.